Hello everyone, it's Louisa, and in today's video, I have my very first ever Disneyland haul to share with you. If you're a returning a viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate the support. And if you're new here, hi! My name is Louisa, and I'm just a girl who is trying to incorporate her childhood loves and hobbies into her adult lifestyle, and one of those is Disney. So hello friends, I got back from my Disneyland trip just a few days ago, and I am so excited to share what I got. <laughs> because a lot of the stuff or souvenirs that I got or picked out have to go along with certain stories of the trip and certain experiences. So a lot of these were not just, oh, I'm going to buy this for fun or because I like it. Um, quite a few of them were purchased out of necessity. <laughs> um, but I am so excited to share it with you guys. So let's just launch right on in. On the first day when I got there, I flew in and then I spent some time at Downtown Disney. So I bought two things on that day. So the first thing that I got is actually a book, which I've talked about this, I think, on the channel before. And um, I am a very slow reader, but I love books. Like I love going to Barnes and Noble and reading the back of books. Love it. But actually reading and finishing a book or anything is very hard for me. Now, before I get into this, on the plane, I had this with me. My mom got me this before my Disney college program in 2019. So I've had this magazine for a long time. And it's funny because I just saw a reissue of it in Target because of Disney 100th. So um, I was just laughing that, you know, it's been how many years and I hadn't read it. So I finally decided, okay, I'm gonna read it. And I read the entire thing, 96 pages, which is big for me on my flights to California. And I just found it really inspirational and really, really interesting and fascinating. And so reading an entire magazine like this in one sitting is unheard of for me. And so it just sparked something in me. Wasn't planning on finishing that because normally that would take me a long time and I wouldn't even finish it. Um, so the fact I bought a book as my first thing in Disneyland is really saying a lot. Um, but I got this Women of Walt Disney Imagineering, 12 Women Reflect on Their Trailblazing Theme Park Careers. So I saw this and after reading this Disney Parks magazine, which really talks about Walt's inspirations for Disneyland, Disney World, I was just really inspired and I wanted, I saw this book and it was about the women of Walt Disney Imagineering. And normally that was a pretty male dominated industry. We think of mostly like, I mean, I, I don't know. When I think of like the early days of Disney, I think of mostly male animators. And I mean, the heads of Disney have been male, like Walt Disney, Roy Disney, Michael Eisner, you know, Bob Chapek, all of those people their males. <laughs> so oh, it's refreshing to get a different perspective, especially from women. I have not read any of this. I have just like looked through. It looks really interesting. I am so excited to read it. And this was $29.99. I do not believe. Yes. And then the other thing I got while I was exploring downtown Disney was a build your own lightsaber. Now, during my Disney college program, I did work in Disney Springs. One of the stores I worked at was Star Wars Galactic Outpost. And so uh, we had a build your own lightsaber table and I made my own lightsaber. And before the trip, I was like, well, I wanna have a little photo shoot in Batu, Galaxy's Edge. So I'll bring my lightsaber. But then my mom and my brother were like, why don't you get a new one? Like, why don't you have two lightsabers, like a East Coast one and then a West Coast one? And I was like, okay, seems kind of weird, but all right. And I'm so glad they suggested that because yellow blades. When I worked at Swago, we did not have yellow blades. So I don't know if that's just an us thing, but I got to the Star Wars trading post in downtown Disney and I saw the yellow blade and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with having a West Coast <laughs> lightsaber. Um, and I like the build your own lightsabers because you get to be part of the experience and the customization and it doesn't cost 
a lot of money. <laughs> Um, this is just a single blade and I got it for $29.99. So now we go into me actually being in Disneyland. So the first park day of my trip, I spent the entire day in Disneyland. So I didn't buy anything besides food up until after I rode Splash Mountain. So if you take a look at my highlight reel, which I'll have linked up in the cards above, Disneyland Splash Mountain wrecked me. I was absolutely soaked. I should have done my research beforehand, I guess, um, but just from my experiences at Disney World, like I knew at, at the World Splash Mountain, I think you could get splashed, but you could also kind of fake it and not really get too splashed. Like there was some gray areas. No, I did not know that Disneyland Splash Mountain will get you soaked. And it didn't help that I was front row, um, <laughs> front seat. Um, so I was completely drenched and my backpack was completely drenched of the stuff I brought because I didn't, I should have put my stuff in a locker beforehand, but I didn't even think about doing that. Um, so we had we had to do some damage control and we had to buy these souvenirs out of necessity, but I'm glad I bought them because they're really nice to have. So the first thing that I purchased was this backpack from The Emporium because my backpack was soaked and a lot of my clothes were soaked. Luckily, I had brought a change of outfit and my third outfit that I had yet to wear wasn't too wet, so I was able to wear that, um, but I was like, I need something to carry around my stuff and also to put the wet stuff in. I requested, um, I asked if I could have additional like Disney Park plastic bags um, and that's what I put my wet clothes in. And then I went and I got a locker for the rest of my day. So that way I wasn't having to carry around my dirty, wet clothes <laughs> along with my backpack and all this other stuff. So. I learned about the beauty of locker storage on this trip, so never underestimate the power of a good locker. Um, but anyways, so I saw this backpack. I thought it was really cute. It's pink. It just has a nice little sketch of Mickey. And what was appealing about it was that it was $49.99. Um, I feel like for Disney, like $49.99 for a backpack that can actually really carry stuff is actually a really good price um because i know that lounge flies for example um they can go for like 80 90 bucks and they're very detailed and very beautiful but they really don't fit much and they're like half of this size so what's awesome is we got pocket here pocket here and i just thought for 49.99 i was like okay because i didn't know if my backpack that i had brought was gonna make it Luckily it did and all my clothes besides the shoes I wore on Splash Mountain made it through. So yay, I thought we were gonna have way more casualties. But this is also just a nice backpack to have. And so this was the first thing I bought in Disneyland. Then later on <laughs> that night, I went back to the Emporium and because one, my feet were killing me. I had put on heels to go along with the dress I was wearing for Fantasyland and by Aurora's Castle and I was getting blisters and I was like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. I do not want to keep walking around in them. And I also was cold because <laughs> I had been drenched and it was starting to get dark. And so I was like, I should have, I should have packed a jacket or something. I just figured California would be super hot. Um, so I ended up getting two more things at the Emporium later on that night. The first thing I got are these Mickey flip flops. My mom absolutely is like flip flops are not park shoes and just, no, but I needed this comfort. So these were $29.99. So better than this $64.99 Crocs. Um, and they did, they did the job the rest of the night. My feet were still screaming and I still am recovering from the blisters that I got, but these were so helpful. I'm so glad I bought them because then I wore them like everywhere the rest of my trip, including into the airport. <laughs> And then because I was cold and needed to warm up, I got this hoodie 
Um, and it says Disneyland Resort. And it has been washed, that's why it's a little, a little wrinkled, crumpled, but that's okay. Um, I'm a crumbled up piece of paper lying here. That's what Splash Mountain did to me. I didn't intend to buy a hoodie or need to have this, um, but I had seen this design in a lot of different stuff. Like there's t-shirts at both Disney World, Disneyland that had like this yellow and then this kind of like retro print. And so I've always kind of wanted a piece from this collection, but I just have never, I always have so many shirts and whatnot that I never was like, okay, like I need to get one. So I went for this design and it was $54.99, so steep, but you know what? I'm honestly gonna wear this all the time. It's yellow, my favorite color, super comfy, and I'll be wearing this all the time. So I didn't need to purchase it, but I will make up for the fact that I purchased this. <laughs> So then we had park day number two, and it was completely devoted to Disney California Adventure. Now, before I went into the park, I did go to downtown Disney to do some shopping because my shoes did not survive Slash Mountain. And so I knew I needed new closed toed shoes. And also those shoes were my work shoes that I wore to work <laughs> as both a dance teacher and at a hospitality job. So. I was like, well, kind of need to replace those. And so I looked around World of Disney at all the shoes and they either didn't have my size or they were like Crocs that were $64.99. So I really needed something. My work shoes have to be, at least for my hospitality job, have to be um, black. And so, and I have, I'm on my feet a lot at my job, so they need to be closed toed and I need to be able to in them virtually all day so the $64.99 fun embellished crocs were not gonna work for work <laughs> um, so I decided to venture into a non Disney store in downtown Disney and I ended up going to California Soul and I saw that they had these vans I've never owned a pair of vans before but I know that they're a reliable shoe and I knew one of my co-workers consistently wears them so I got these they were $110, um, which I was not expecting to spend on shoes. I didn't think I was going to have to replace my shoes after Splash Mountain, but that's what happens. It's fine. Um, but I mean, these are great quality shoes, so I'm, I'm not too mad. I can wear them to work. Um, they're very nice. So, um, so not quite a Disney souvenir, but kind of a Disney souvenir. So again, a purchase that I had to make on my Disney trip because of an experience. <laughs> Splash Mountain really did me dirty, guys. <laughs> All the souvenirs I got from Disney California Adventure were Avengers or Marvel based. So there's the big Avengers Superstore. And then um, there was a stand that was selling some of the stuff they had inside of the Superstore, um, but in different sizes. And so I had seen this in the Superstore when I went in to look around. And I was like, that is pretty sleek. It's a nice jacket with the A Avengers. And then it says Avengers Campus on the other sleeve. And I was just like, oh, this is slick. Oh, and it's got the thumb holes. Oh my God. Um, but I was like, I have so many jackets, like, I do not need this, but I was like, this is so sleek and cool looking. Um, but what helped was in the Superstore, they did not have my size. So I was like, all right, then I don't need to get it. Then after my time in Avengers Campus, and I was like, okay, it's time for me to like pick my souvenirs and what I want to take. I was checking out the stand, the smaller stand of stuff outside of the Superstore. And lo and behold, they had my size. And I was like, fine i'll go out on a limb i'll be reckless i'm gonna get it it's so cool so i have this awesome sleek avengers jacket this was 64.99 so definitely did not need this but it's so cool i couldn't help myself so hopefully i will be wearing it a lot but i also like don't want to dirty it up because it's so beautiful 
Um, so I decided to splurge and get this, even though, did I need it? No. But come on, it's so cool. Then I had a Marvel hat that I got from Cast Connection back during my Disney College program, but it ended up getting kind of dirty and so I washed it and then it just didn't fit my head and it was super funky. So long story short, I don't have, I didn't have a Marvel hat anymore. So when I went, I was like, I really want to find like a Marvel hat, even if it's not like the Marvel logo. So I got this one, Avengers Assemble. I think this is pretty cool. Um, da -da -da -da. I look like Wayne from Wayne's World. I think I've said this in another video, but, uh, yeah, okay. I just, I gotta wear my hair in a ponytail or something. Wayne's World, Avengers Assemble! Okay, this was $29.99. The last souvenir that I got was this patch, and it says Web Labs California Workshop, and it is basically... Um, in reference to the uh, Spider-Man ride. I thought I would get this patch because I have a junk journal and I thought that this was uh, a cool thing I could put in there. And it was $11.99, which I thought for a patch was not bad for Disney pricing. So I was like this, yeah. So very happy about that. And it will be added into my junk journal. And that is it for my first Disneyland haul. Um, I'm glad that I didn't buy a lot of stuff. Um, it definitely could have been worse. There were so many pins I wanted to get. Um, I took so many pictures of pins I wanted to get, but I just was like, do I really need to buy them? No. And so the whole Splash Mountain fiasco, I got stuff that I can use a lot more than pins. Also, before we go, I can also show you guys the pins that I pin traded for in the parks. So I did two pin trades while I was at Disney California Adventure um, at Disneyland. I just did not want to wear around my trading lanyard. It just was heavy and I was like, no. Um, so I traded for this Daisy one. This is so cute, um, and I'm going to put it on my pin boards. It's going to be a part of my collection. I do not want to trade it, so this is super, super cute. Love it. And then I also traded for this Bippity Boppity Boo one, which will also be staying in my collection. I'll be putting it with like my Disney Princess pins and whatnot, and Daisy will go with my Mickey and Friends sets or pin board. Um, so those are also souvenirs and memories. So yay! That is officially it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you feel like it, feel free to leave a comment, leave a like, and subscribe if you would like. And I will see you guys again soon with a brand new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best. Bye.